Well, hello YouTube. I just got a question asking the differences between the iManifold and the iConnect. And I thought I'd go ahead and shoot a video on it, just talking about the differences between the two devices. As many of you may know, as most of the people that I have commenting most of the time know, the iManifold came out first. And in my opinion, it revolutionized what a digital gauge set could be capable of. Not only were you able to see your refrigerant pressures and temperatures for your superheat and subcool, but once the wireless air probes came out, you could also see the air temperatures of your duct wirelessly from wherever you were on the job site, at least in theory. There were and are some limitations to the iManifold based on the strength of your Bluetooth signal between your phone or tablet and the iManifold itself. Um, so that is one of the limitations of the iManifold. I'd say that's limitation number one. Bluetooth range to whatever tablet or smartphone you are using to see your information. When that information hit the internet, a lot of people started complaining and bemoaning or you know, were disappointed that they weren't getting what they thought they would get out of it or wanted to get out of it. So, Jim Bergman and the iManifold team went to the drawing board, I would say, and started working on a solution. And they came up with the iConnect. I don't know if that would actually be true other than the fact that it came out second and it was always in the works, but either way, the iConnect came second. At the time the iConnect came out, there were wireless pressure probes for the iManifold system and there was a repeater to be able to extend the Zigbee network as well as collect temperature information from uh, temperature connections T1 and T2 on the side of the repeater probe. Zigbee was never really a major issue. It was always Bluetooth, but with the iConnect, they removed the necessity of having the device directly connected by hoses to the condenser whether it be a heat pump, air conditioner, refrigeration unit, what have you. And that opened up the ability to literally be just about anywhere on the job that the Zigbee signal would reach and allow you to still see all your information because the iConnect is by design intended to be connected to your uh, belt by a belt clip or dropped into your tool bag because it's a very small device. I think maybe it's six inches by six by six by two and a half or something like that. It's not very large at all. It's the size of a fairly large electrical meter. So that's where the iConnect shines. With the iManifold, you have a four port manifold which allows you to pull a vacuum through the manifold, to add refrigerant through the manifold, and do any of your refrigerant adjustment work very simply by simply connecting the manifold to the system and then using the knobs and hoses to add or remove or vacuum or purge nitrogen for that matter. With the iConnect, you don't have a manifold you simply have your pressure transducers or your pressure probes that connect to the system and you have to provide some sort of a T-fixture to be able to side tap the 
refrigerant pressure port and allow yourself to either remove refrigerant, add refrigerant, make your adjustments that way. There's a lot of people on here doing videos that talk about the setups that they've got. A lot of people like to use the um, T fittings that you can use to add a pressure, low pressure switch to a system via the service valve. And the other half seem to prefer to use a Schrader core tool to remove or to, to, to allow them to have a T fitting on the side of the refrigerant hose and allow them to add, remove refrigerant. Um, so I don't know if I can really put all of this into a one, two, and three as far as drawbacks and power, but the main drawback of the iManifold has always been the Bluetooth range to your monitoring device. And the main benefit of the iConnect is that you have almost zero limitation as far as range between your probes and your iConnect device. And since the Bluetooth connection is either in your bag or on your belt, the signal to your phone or tablet is very straightforward, very short range. So I'd say that that's probably the bullet points. iManifold is great. It's actually waterproof or extremely water resistant and the iConnect is not. Um, the wireless probes are not water resistant. They're not waterproof and you have to go through some extra work to be able to get um, your work done when it's wet outside. Uh, it's raining right now and uh, I had to set up my umbrella and make sure that all of my components at the condenser were protected from moisture. So I guess in the end, there's four points. Point number one, the draw, biggest drawback to iManifold is Bluetooth range to your device. Point number one, in benefit of the iConnect, call it point number two overall, is that the iConnect keeps that Bluetooth signal short and uses the much more powerful Zigbee signal to communicate between all of your sensors. Point number three, iManifold is water resistant, very, very strongly water resistant. And point number four is iConnect is not, and the wireless probes are not water resistant. So that's really the short and long of it all. I'm sure we could start digging a little bit deeper into little details and come up with more than four points, but all in all, those four points give you the biggest differences between iManifold and iConnect. For me, if I was doing installation or new construction startups, change outs, any, any sort of primary installation job, the iManifold would probably make more sense because you, it's much quicker to go ahead and set up with the manifold in the play. If you were doing primarily service, the iConnect to me makes a lot more sense so since you can have just your probes located and carry the signal with you. Um, ultimately, the iConnect would, would shine both service and installation as long as you outfitted yourself with some T fittings to be able to add and remove refrigerant. Um, and the iManifold would not do poorly in service, but you would be limited to how far the Bluetooth signal was able to reach between whatever component you were connected to and wherever you wanted to be on the job site. So um, that's what I've got on that subject. And I hope that helps somebody out there looking Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, share, and we'll see you on the next video. Peace.
cold night But man, your heart is heavy You got troubles on 